Thank you, Jackie, for agreeing to um, speak from Berlin, um, where you've been for, uh, you've been there for at least a couple of days. I think yesterday you were speaking at the Rosa Luxemburg conference. Um, and I'm just going to actually play a clip to you of yourself. Uh, how do you feel about that? Okay, well, it has to be done. <laughs> Here we go. What we see in Starmer is someone who was quite prepared. I mean, he's, he's great at it, to lie to get to where he wanted to be. He gave the members during the election for leadership 10 pledges, which was all about really being a socialist. He has now broken every single one of them, every single one of them. He is an extraordinary... Um, uh, dissembler of the truth. Um, it's been very effective, but he could not have done that without the support of the Parliamentary Labour Party, who overwhelmingly are not just, you know, to the right of Corbyn, but they're actually further right traditionally than the Labour Party has been, I think, for some time. So he couldn't have done it without their support and without the support, I'm going to say it again, of the media and the support. I mean, it was very clear when Corbyn was coming up for the election and the generals of the army actually said, and they made this public, if Corbyn becomes prime minister, there will be soldiers on the street. So it was that clear that this... This whole thing has been a coup, a well-organised coup, to lead us to where we are. And where we are now is with somebody who absolutely says he will change basically nothing as to what the Tories do. He'll just be a better bureaucrat. He will just administer their rules better. And in that way, I think what's going to be really exciting is if, and the prob probability is he will get in, when he gets in, that will be the time to look at what the left is going to do, because that is when real struggle is going to happen. Wow, so you're telling all the Germans about what's going on here, uh, and obviously international uh, people probably from further than that. Uh, how are they responding to that news about what's happened with Corbyn, uh, the coup, and also what Starmer's done with the purge and how he's been dishonest? Did they know this or are they surprised or do they? Well, you know, there's a mixture. There are the people who are political nerds like you and me and many people in the audience. And then there are the others who are on the left in Germany and other places who, because there's a press embargo, on reporting this have absolutely no idea what is going on. And so for them, uh, not just yesterday's um, intervention by me was significant, but the film, you know, The Biggest Lie is also very significant in terms of that because you cannot underestimate how many people do not realize what is going on. And what, what's the feedback been on, on it? Have they, have they suggested any anything that you know that, that there's any similarities of anything else that they've seen before in, or anywhere else i mean the, of course the similarities were drawn out about you know pre-nazi germany what happened to the socialists that there was a discussion uh i had a discussion with people on that what did happen is that the tickets for the premier totally uh sold out but there are links which I have seen and differences. And some of the links are, for example, that the government is actually taking um, the equivalent of the Morning Star newspaper uh, to court, saying it is now unconstitutional to discuss Marx. So what we're seeing amongst a number of so-called liberal European governments, ours included, are the most draconian anti-democratic actions being made against trade unions, against the left. And why are they doing it? It's because they are scared, because they've got no tricks left up their sleeve 
and they are waging a war which is bleeding money. And in Germany, that's what uh, the big topic on the left is, the fear of a third world war, partly because of their proximity and of course their historical experience, but also because if you have a look, Germany has hugely increased military spending. And you know, that's what happens. They use a, a, some kind of you know, conflict as an excuse for building up arms. And we see everybody getting better armed, more military spending. And it's almost logical then that there's a war. It, it's like a kind of cyclical thing. And I really don't think as the left that we're taking this risk of war seriously enough. Oh, well, that's interesting. And, and I mean, the, the Rosa Luxemburg conference, it, it looks like there's lots and lots of people there. How, how many people were, were at, the, at the event when you spoke? So, um, you know, it, it, there was about, I can't tell you how many when I spoke, but I can tell you that there were over 4,000 people uh, gone through the turnstiles on that day. But there were also 20,000 plus people online so it's pretty major and then this um, I'm just about to leave to go to the Rosa Luxemburg march which I think leaves from I think it's where Rosa Luxemburg's body was found or where she was killed to the um, the the cemetery of the murdered socialists where all the prominent German socialists who of course were killed by the Nazis and we forget that you know they were the first who were killed are actually interred. So it's going to be quite an interesting thing because recently there's been a number of times when the police have attacked the um, this march. Um, we're hoping it's not going to happen, but it's such an opportunity to go and see and, and really absorb not just the history of what's uh, happened in Germany and in Europe, but what's happening now with the left. Well, that's, uh, that is interesting. Uh... To, to what you say about the, the socialists being uh, the first to be uh, murdered by the, the Nazis, uh, does that make the Germans more proud of their socialism in some way, do you think? Oh, yeah. I mean, there's no doubt about it. There is a real pride here about their, not just their stance against the Nazis, but their ongoing anti-racism. And so this is a group who are very used to seeing themselves persecuted I mean, to the extremes by the forces of the state. And, you know, and they are extremely aware of what's happening now in terms of uh, the interference with the German uh, secret service and, and, and the German state in, ter uh, in terms of, you know, they're not, no longer is their equivalent of the Morning Star allowed to advertise on public transport, for example. I mean, all wow. of outlets are being closed down and we don't know about this and nobody is talking about this and I suspect if I went to France or other countries on Euro in Europe I'd find out that a similar thing was happening. So the, the, the sort of being in, in a place where there's loads of uh, other people who feel the same kind of feelings as you uh, but a, a German and, and, and from a different background does that make you feel stronger? Oh yeah of course because, you know, it's very easy uh, for us as radicals, as socialists, as Marxists, as whatever we define as, to feel, to feel an isolation and also to be gaslit, to be constantly told that what we know is right is wrong. And suddenly I'm in an arena where I'm talking to people from Cuba, I'm talking to people from France, talking to people from Germany and from Russia. And, and we're actually hearing similar things and sharing similar uh, experiences. Wow, that sounds amazing. Um, I, so you're having, a, you're having a good time in, in a way. I'm having, a, I'm having a really, really exhausting time. You can hear my voice is, my voice is kind of going. Um, but I think it, it, you know, it's worthwhile because it's such an opportunity. We don't get those kind of world conventions of the left, do we? We don't get that point to share those kind of ideas, particularly in the UK. So for me, um, Berlin has always been such a fulcrum 
of, of ideas and of action for the left and co political um, expression. It was a huge, huge um, uh, opportunity to come here.